Okay, so we just now deduced rho E, the effective density for a completely saturated medium, saturated by a single fluid is given by rho M multi minus rho M minus rho F multiplied by phi, we deduced now. We will also now take care of the Athe's law which shows that how the porosity phi varies with depth, phi z is the porosity at depth z phi 0 is the porosity at the surface, B is called compaction constant, but in some literature 1 divided by B is also called compaction constant, which is, which is having some values for certain kinds of sediments or sedimentary plastic rocks. And Z is the depth. This is an empirical relationship and it gives an exponential curve, E is the exponential series here. Now, from these two equations, we can write down a new equation, the rho BWZ. We are replacing rho E by a more useful terminology, rho BW means bulk weight. The density of the bulk weight rock at a depth Z will be given by rho M minus rho M minus rho F and this phi will be replaced by phi 0 multiplied by E to the power minus BZ. So, what it shows it is an ideal situation that there is a medium which is completely saturated and how the density varies with depth, Z is the depth. So, now we are trying for a more realistic rock material and we are going to find out the effective density for such a medium. Let us look at this diagram now, this is a cuboid of rock unit, this is the y coordinate axis, this is the x coordinate axis and z is the vertical depth. Normally in the coordinate geometry we take the z axis perpendicular and skyward direction, but here it is different in a geological case. Now O is the origin which has a coordinate 0, 0, 0. On this body depth wise how the porosity varies is given by Athe's law and how the bulk density varies is also presented. Now, what about the density variation along the x direction and along the y direction? We are going to see them and then we are going to combine and find out the effective density of this material. Look at here, the density along x axis variation can be written in this way, rho x comma 0 comma 0 is equal to rho 0, some value at this point plus k x multiplied by x. So, x is the coordinate unit for x equal to 2 that means for the coordinate there rho 2 comma 0 comma 0 it will be rho 0 plus k x multiplied by 2 and in this way along the y coordinate axis suppose there is a linear relation linear variation of density along y direction then this is the expression. How these expressions will look like in terms of graph suppose here rho x comma 0 comma 0 is plotted and x is the distance which is plotted here, then this straight line is a linear relation, of course tan theta is given by k x and in this case tan phi will be equal to k y. In certain geological cases it has been found that the density can vary linearly along horizontal direction. So, these two are taken care. Now, going back to this rho b w z, this basically how the density varies along the z direction. So, we rewrote this as rho. 0, 0, z is equal to this expression. So, just recollect we started with rho e, then change the symbol to rho b w, then we came to rho b w z and then this rho b w z is replaced by or represented in a better way rho 0, 0, z. So, this is how the density varies along the z direction, along a linear with a linear formula the density varies along the x direction with another linear formula the density varies along the y direction. Imagine that in this manner the density is varying within this material, how to find out the effective density. Have a look at this. Now, from this equation 1, 2 and 3 we can write this equation and you can see if I put y and z equal to 0, it comes back to our equation 2. If we put 
x and y equal to 0, then rho 0, 0, 0, z it comes back to our equation number 1 over here. What is rho 0 over here? Please note that rho 0 is equal to this term, this entire term is equal to rho 0. So, that is the point here we are considering that is the density. For example, if I write from here rho 0, 0, 0, it turns out to be rho 0. That means, at the origin point, this is the amount of density rho 0 and the, I repeat it is over here, this is the amount. Now, consider that the cuboid is small, dx is this length, dy is this length and dz is this length. So, the total volume is given by dx, dy and dz their multiplication. So, that the mass will be given by this volume multiplied by at a very small minuscule size of this cuboid, this is the density rho x, y, z which is over here. That means, which is equal to this term. Now, think of that the cuboid, this length is x 1, that means a bigger length, it is no more a small cuboid. This length is y 1 unit and this length is z 1 unit. So, the mass of such a cuboid will be given by this expression of mass and we do a triple integration from 0 to x 1, 0 to y 1 and 0 to z 1. Why we are doing so? Because this point is our 0 0 0 origin point. 0 to x 1, 0 to y 1 and 0 to z 1. If we do such an integration, then we find out the mass. Now, there is another way of calculating the mass that is equal to the x 1, y 1, z 1. Here, x 1, y 1, z 1 multiplied gives to, gives rise to the volume and multiplied by the effective density rho e. So, if these two masses are equated, then we can find out the effective density of such a material, of such a material. Now, let us see one more example of finding out the effective density in a rock where along the x axis the density varies linearly, along the y axis also it varies linearly, so also along the z axis, which I have represented in this way. The density variation along the x axis can be given by rho 0 plus k x multiplied by x and this means that at the origin over this point the density is rho 0. And along the y axis also the variation is a linear relationship and imagine that along the depth vertically down the density varies in a linear manner. Now, these three equations can be combined rho x y z is equal to not that these three are summed up rho 0 is maintained like that and k x x, k y y and k z z are added. So, you can check if we put y equal to z equal to 0, it goes back to equation 1. This is our equation 1. Similarly, taking any 2 out of these 3 equal to 0, you can also get back to the other equations. So, this is a valid formulation of equation how the density varies along x, y and z axis. I repeat it is not just by summing up these 3 expressions, if I sum up it becomes 3 rho 0 and if it is so and if I put in these values, I cannot go back to our equation 1. So, therefore, it is like this. Now, imagine that this cuboid is of very small size, this length is dx unit, this length is dy unit, this length is dz unit. So, the total volume is given by dx multiplied by dy multiplied by dz. The total mass is given by the density at x, y, z point since it is very, very small. So, I can take this density same as this density and then multiply it by the volume which is here. Now, imagine instead of as we did earlier, instead of dx, dy, dz, I take some finite length x 1 unit, y 1 unit and here the z 1 unit. So, that means, this coordinate is x 1 comma 0 comma 0, this coordinate becomes 0 comma y 1 comma 0 and this coordinate becomes 0 comma 0 comma z 1. So, in that case, the total mass will be given by integration 
0 to x1, 0 to y1 and 0 to z1 and then this term. So, now I can write down this expression from here which I did over there multiplied by dx dy dz. Also, we can find out the mass in another way. What is that? The mass can be calculated in this way. Imagine this cuboid has an effective density rho e that one multiplied by x1 y1 z1 because this is the volume is the total mass. So, now what I write is this equation 1 and 2 can be equated and from there the effective density expression can be obtained. So, we have set the triple integration like this and now for the geoscience students I am writing down the detail of the triple integration how it is done. Note that in this triple integration there is dx, dy and dz. Let us do the first integration using dz and that has been done over there. Now, z had value 0 to z1. So, within the third bracket and at that end you can see 0 to z1 I have set. Then I have put the z1 and 0 those values and then what happens is z1 comes out and rest of the things I have stated. In the next phase, we go for the integration 0 to y1. So, dy being utilized over here and in the third bracket and outside you see I have written 0 to y1. After those values being inserted, z1 and y1 comes out here and within the first bracket is rest of the expressions and then there is dx at the end of this line you can see. Now, we are going to integrate from 0 to x1 and that has been performed here. Now, we are going to put the values in the third bracket at that side you see 0 to x1. That also has been done so, and then finally, we find that x1, y1, z1 term actually comes out which is basically the volume remember. So, this expression the big one can be simplified in this way x1, y1, z1 I am not going to change it rho 0 plus 0 0.5 and then whatever is there in the first bracket can be stated in this way sum of kq, q is the subscript multiplied by q1 and q varies from x, y and z. If that sum is being made then this is that expression. So, now we have found the total mass volume multiplied by the representative density and that is equal to what we have found just now. If we equate x1, y1, z1 that means the volume cancels out and the representative density rho e is given by rho 0 plus 0 0.5 kq q1 and there I have to basically add a summation symbol. So, okay. And now note that for kq is equal to 0, then the rho e is equal to rho 0 that matches with our common sense. So, by various models I have demonstrated how the effective density can be calculated and now this effective density can be used in the isostatic equations. But having said so much, be very careful that these are models and there can be more complications in the natural world. We have considered that the density varies linearly with depth linearly in x and y direction there can be some other variations, some other possibilities also. There can be the effect of fluids various fluids in the pore then their temperature their salinity and that can also change the situation. So, this is just a model beginner step and what can be done in the next phase is more realistic models can be built up. We have discussed how to find out the effective density, but there were many assumptions and straight away using this effective density into isostatic model may be problematic. The reason is that the plates or the lithospheric blocks that we are thinking of isostatic balancing, the reason is that plates which are around 100 km thick consist of complete crust and the upper mantle. Now, certainly in the upper mantle porosity and Athis law that has been used in the deduction of the effective density in one case certainly does not work. So, be careful while using this, this effective density and this can work only in the shallow crustal region.